it's it's truly incredible. So it's is a masterclass in suspense, but also war building that you know goes beyond anything I had seen at the time. Right. Hello, I'm Fede Alvarez. Uh, I'm here to talk about the film Alien Romulus. It's, it's actually, I mean, it cl clearly very inspired in style by the first film uh, in many levels. Also has a lot of elements of, of aliens. Story-wise, it's kind of a mix of both. Um, it starts more, it has more of the pace of the first film for the, for the most part, but then, and then it goes beyond, right? It, it's, it's, uh, imagine if you watch a movie that was, if you go to the cinema one day to watch one and two together, back to back, nonstop, like, you know, Ripley escape on the Narcissus and then gets picked up again, and then they go to Manchester, well, that would be more close to what the movie is. It, it, it's truly um, a good mix of those both movies on its structure, but uh, it, it's really its own thing. There's a lot of things that are completely new here, and um, it's just starting with the characters. It undeniably is a, is a movie that has a lot more character drama among the characters and a story among them that really hooks you. I, I, I wanted to tell a story that if you subtracted all the aliens and all the creatures, you took all that out, and you just left the story, you will still be engaged to the last second to know how it ends. You know, that's, I think, what hooks us the most about stories. What, what, what would happen between these two, three, four characters? So who's going to betray who? Who's going to save the other one? Who, who's going to be the coward at the end of the day? Who's going to turn out to be braver than you thought? I, I think those things fascinate me and, and they and really hook us all. And uh, so if you have that and plus you have a really good story and you have horror, there's a good thread to the, to the stories, that's when you have a full meal of a story. So mo most alien movies in the past, because of different times mostly, they don't really develop much in that front. And, you know, you, you might have, you know, you have obviously Ripley and Newt on part two, that is a really strong connection. But then for the most part, a lot of them are more like, you know, every man for itself and, and everybody trying to survive. And because they're adults as well, they're not particularly close friends or family members, you know. So, so here that kind of res redefines all the story just by bringing a group of characters that, that are really close to each other. So, so it, is, it is its own thing. It, it doesn't compare directly to, to none of them, you know, truly. Uh, but they, it has element of all of them stylistically, and but uh, as a story, it's a completely different story. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's the first image I actually saw, which was um, it was the, the yeah, Brett's kill, the death, the first kill of the Xenomorph in the first movie. I remember watching that. I have a very clear memory of watching that for the first time, and and what I I want to say love because I was terrified by it, but. Uh, but it was this this concept that I didn't know what it was. I thought it was made of chains at first because you hear the chains and you look up and and then when it comes down, you you don't even know what you're looking at. And uh, and I saw it as this like big black dragon. That's why my child brain was seeing that. What is that dragon doing inside a, a spaceship? And and the way he takes him up, you know, like suddenly he raises him and go, what, how did that, is it flying? Is it going? It's just so magical. It, and, and that's something that is hard to do, you know, these days, or even back then, I'm sure it was, to have the audience completely in awe about what just happened, what was that thing? And that was, that was my first memory of seeing that kill and being completely blown away by it, terrified, and, but above, above all, they completely obsessed and fascinated with whatever was that thing that came down from those from that ceiling, right? And you kind of watch, you have to watch the whole movie really in that first film to really understand what it is. If you see it now with eyes of knowing, it's easier, but at the time, you truly don't know until the final shot when you see it being blown out of the engine and you see it has legs and it's, 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 it's basically very human. And that was the scariest of the, all the ideas, to see that it was human, right? Like that you really, really didn't know. So that was my first memory, to really the first encounter uh, with the Xenomorph. And it didn't matter how much they show, because they show quite a bit, you couldn't figure it out what was what, right? And that was, that was amazing. It's different. Aliens is really a display of virtuosity, virtuosism from from Cameron, right? Like of the creation of that world, and uh, and also that movie uh, having 
talked to a lot of people that worked in the movie, and they, they had no money to make that movie the way that Cameron wanted to make it. it. It was Aliens, you'll never think of this, but it was a low-budget movie by every possible measure. And and you see the movie, it still today looks massive. It looks like a massive spectacle. So I think it's really um, invention and invention and creation of technology and, and weapons and, and also incredible characters, right? I think... I think Aliens goes beyond a bit more in the creation of these characters and their relationship, and you get to know them a bit more, and, and there's more meaningful relationships among them. And, you know, not super deep, but at least there is definitely more than in Alien. Um, but uh, I think, you know, for me, what stayed with me was also just more the action. It was terrifying at the time as well when I saw it. It was really scary. It was people go, ah, oh, well, actually, it's not that scary, but it was for me when I saw it. It was just, not, it was super tense because it's, Aliens is very, very suspenseful. Um, for a movie that for an hour doesn't show you the, the Xenomorphs, it's, it's truly incredible. So it's, it's a master class in suspense, but also war building that you know goes beyond anything people had seen at the time. Right? I think Alien 3 has a lot of merit to me as well. I mean, they all, I love all of them, really. I, I truly had a great time. Every time there's been an Alien movie in theaters, I went to see it, I had a great time. You know, I, I, it, it stayed with me, which is what I value the most about a movie, that it stays with me through the years. And I'm still thinking about it, like today we're still discussing Alien 3. So, but uh, it, it was just also... Um, what I think I admired the most of the time was how radical, how radical it was and how ballsy it was that, that just, I, remember, I don't know if you remember, but the, all everybody was talking about was that they had shaved her hair, <laughs> her head, right? Remember that was the whole talk of how could they, what they shaved? She was like, that. you didn't see that every day, like a, like a woman, like a Hollywood actress, leading lady, shaving her head and making it look like it was too completely radical at the time. And, uh, and that was a statement on its own, that it was going to go to a way more realistic place and crude and, 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 and raw. And, and even though, obviously, Fincher maybe didn't get his vision 100% in there, he, he put plenty of his style in that film that, I, that, that I'm so grateful for. Um, I think it's, it, that movie, obviously, is a lot more about the characters than anything else. And that's, that's a good example of a story that the most interesting elements were the human elements and the characters and their relationship with the drama that was happening there, that the creature itself and the, the horror part of it all. But uh, still, and I mean, you should forget that one of the, or the most iconic alien shot in all the franchise was in that movie, when Sigourney is against the wall and the creature is right on her face. That's Alien 3, so yeah, I, I, I'm a massive fan of Fincher, so you know, I love that movie. And that movie as well, like I was telling that this morning, at the time I was already obsessed with Jean-Pierre Jeanette films and from the Delicatessen and NCD of Australia, La Cité des Enfants Perdus. And um, I, was, I was so happy when I hear that he was making, that he was going to do a, a Alien. I, I couldn't believe it. And, uh, and of course, as a fan, when you went into that movie and you saw his actors and his style all over the movie, because he really put all he'd print in the movie in an unapologetic way. And um, and it's true, I remember, and also he was really pushing for more realism as well with the creatures and you can, you can see the breath, you can see, you can see things that were just really make you feel that it was, oh, this is how they look in real life. This is like aliens done in a more, in a, in, in, in a more real way. And still some classic moments, I, the moment of going to discovery and all her clones, oh my God, like terrifying. Uh, the birth of her when she's rebirth, uh, what a poetry of cinema when that, that shot from the top and you go down the tunnel and you see her breaking through her cocoon and being bored again. It's like pure cinema. So that movie has so many, many incredible uh, you know, cinematic moments. 